Now, we had Asteroid Watch for the Earth. Still a bit worried. Well, we're worried for the moon now. But we're worried for the moon, that's worried right. For the moon. There's a comet heading for the sun, but we're not worried. We're not worried. We're, we're actually excited because this appears to be a comet not from our own solar system. Mm. So when you think about everything that we pretty much talk about in terms of Asteroid Watch and the comets, those are all in our own solar system. There's very few things. In fact, it's only the third that we've think, uh, uh, discovered that have come from another solar system. Because uh, you actually need enough energy to escape the, the pool of your star. Right. Think of like a right. polar so, so there's a point at which you... Because I'm thinking, what's the boundary? And the boundary yeah. would be at the point that one pool ends and another starts. Oh, oh pretty and much. you've got to have yeah. enough energy to get out. Otherwise, it sort of peters out and loops back. Yeah, it's very, exactly, way. that's right. And so, like everything's on a loop. In exactly. So, and that's okay. kind of always heading towards the sun. Right. So if for some reason you have enough energy, you can get over that hump and then keep going. And so we think these are comets that were actually thrown out of another star system. And so so why, a really serious explosion. Or, or something, some sort right. of energy source. It it's, actually it's, means... It's 12 kilometres wide. Yes, yeah, so which is relatively small. That would just burn up on facing the sun? If it, yeah, so this one's not going to come near enough to actually burn up completely. Right. If it did go to near the sun, the sun would melt it millions of kilometres out. What, it, what is interesting enough is it's going to go near the sun and melt which means all of that ice kind of heats off into gas and we can measure its composition. So you actually get to measure the kind of composition of another sol solar system, mm. not from a very far away, but up close. But there'd be nothing that could ever come big enough that would just get melted by the sun. Yeah, I mean, un unless you're talking about an entire other star, which right. doesn't appear to happen, yeah, anything like this... That would is be gonna... problematic for a whole host that, that would, Yeah, all there's right. a lot of issues <laughs> well before it gets near the sun. Uh, I feel like you're... You're sort of a bit of a frustrated political reporter because you keep putting politics on the menu now. <laughs> Growing talk um, that space needs to be a pillar of all. Because, I mean, let's put it this way. Yeah. In 30, 40 years, maybe sooner, is if you control, if you're the most powerful space nation, will you be the most powerful defence nation? Yes, right. without a doubt. Sooner than and, that even? Probably. And, okay. and, in fact, it's already slipping that way. And that's actually one of the worries that we people have wor had about this breakup between Trump and Musk. Will it actually affect the U.S. status in space? Because so much is relied on with SpaceX yeah. and private. Exactly, that's right. right. And, and, you know, China is not slowing down. They're speeding up. Mm. And, you know, all, if, all those nuclear subs that you build actually still need satellites yeah. to know where they're going and, and communication. And, that, and our dependency is only growing on that. So uh, there are groups, including by the, the former Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, who are slowly, growingly saying, we really actually yeah. have to pay attention to this. Every, I just think of so many different elements of TV, anything yeah. from um, Bond movies. I, I remember an old Inspector Gadget episode. There's always a space weapon that just goes fump and everything else is irrelevant. They unveil it and they yeah. go, well, they control the world now. It might not happen that suddenly, I guess. Not that suddenly, but it, it's, it's a slow roll, right? It's okay. a slow roll of power. You know, they, in the 40s, you want to dominate the air from the military aspect. You need to dominate space. You might be space. in defence one day. What do you reckon? Well, I think that, you know, this is why groups like Defence Command and Australia Space Command and Space Force exist, because it's not... They're going to hoover up people like you? Well, I think they're trying to hoover up anyone they can okay. get. And, you know, you need good people to work on this aspect. There you go. If you need to help save Australia, Brad Tucker is here to help. Otherwise, you'll find him each week on Space Watch. Thank you. Thanks.